Chris, um, do you think he's a fan of LinkedIn, perhaps? <laughs> I'm incredibly impressed with the fact that you can breathe through your ears as well, Chris. That was the fastest speaking I've ever heard in my entire life. Congratulations, many, many skills. So, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Stuart Lee. Um, I thought about how to open my presentation in a slightly different way, in a slightly more social way. Surely um, the norm would be to tell you my name and what I do and why I'm here. But I thought, hey, this is social and I work for LinkedIn. Let's try and actually do something a little bit more technologically advanced. Given that we're all here to network and get to know more about social selling, but more importantly, more about people in the room and the experts in the room, I'd like to give you the opportunity to give you some instructions. The first thing I'd like you to do is to go into your LinkedIn app. <laughs> now, this is where you get slightly embarrassed if you haven't got a LinkedIn app. If you haven't, after that opening, <laughs> shame on you. <laughs> now is your chance. Download. Get on the Wi-Fi. So go into your LinkedIn app. Uh, secondly, I'd like you to take a look at your opening profile. You should have the most up-to-date version of LinkedIn because it's a pretty cool app. But down here in the bottom is your network tab. I'd like you to tap on there, please. You all still with me? You're not checking your emails, are you? <laughs> you paid for this, remember? Let's get some value. Once you've checked that, you will see your network. And it should be lots of connections. Hopefully, you've already met new people today. And they've started to build your network. Up in the top, you might see something that you've not noticed before. Find nearby. Ooh. I'd like you to click on it. Did you see? Woo! <laughs> no one's happier right now than Chris. <laughs> so if you find nearby, it might prompt you to turn your Bluetooth on. <laughs> we with you? And it should take you through to this page, where will you instantly will see the list populate with every single person, real time, in this room that's on this app. So, right now, you have the ability to find out who's here that you already know, because it's telling you who your first degree connections are. You have the ability to see the people of interest that you might want to meet. You can send a message, you can send a connection request. And let's face it, there's nothing more social than being social at scale. So feel free to use this now, but more importantly, you can use this in any situation. I've used it at a barbecue before, I've used it at the end of a business meeting. It's a great way to share your profile and bring your profile to life, and also to find out about everybody else in the room. Now, obviously, I'm doing it blind because I don't have three hands, but hopefully it's populated. Are we getting some nods? Yeah. yeah. Lots of people there? Yeah. Great. So use that tool throughout the day. Find people you want to speak to. Use it in your everyday life. My gift to you in this social selling day. So, moving into the presentation. So I have you for the next 25 minutes or so. And what I'd like to do is walk you through the evolution of Sales Navigator, our premier product for social selling, uh, and concentrate a little bit on the why and the innovation side of things. Because it's important that if you are on embarking on the journey of social selling and how it is put into the DNA of your business, you understand the actual brevity of such a situation. So the great thing about cycles of innovation, or innovation, it comes in cycles. It happens. What happens is a cycle or an innovation takes hold of an industry and it fuels it. It powers it. It changes things. And you see this upward curve as the early adopters take advantage of that innovation. But with most things in life, things are only shiny and new for a certain amount of time. And once that opportunity and market intelligence dissipates, it dissipates when every single person or other people in the industry are doing the same thing. Luckily, innovation then rebirths and reborns. What we've found is there's obvious cycles that we can view to see and predict the future. So in terms of an example, I want to talk to you about data storage. So in its first innovation cycle, data storage was very much about being on premise. It's about having big data centers internally. The second innovation came when it worked for virtualization. The, the need to scale access to data became more important than actually having the physical data inside. And the obvious change in the third cycle of innovation was cloud. And I think you'd have to be in the darkest cave, in the darkest place, in the most remote island of the world if you didn't know that cloud is now the force majeure in terms of data innovation. The great news is sales 
see similar cycles. First cycle of sales, go back to the day, it was face to face. And when I say go back in the day, this is, the f if you can think back, the first face to face salesman stood on a soapbox, literally. <coughs> they could have been selling an elixir, shouting at people as they walked by, pitching to everyone and anyone. That evolved over time, so there's many uh, innovations within the cycle. So, like, hey, great idea, why do we go to the customer? Instead of waiting for people to come to us to speak to them, why do we go to them? So door knocking became prevalent. Black books became important, networks, relationships, one-on-one -on -one strength, that became the fall. And that cycle for a good couple of decades. But what happened was the downside of face-to-face -face relationships and, and building relationships one-to-one -one is it's completely and utterly unscalable. So the next innovation took hold and it was powered by technology. Automation took hold in the form of the telephone and telemarketing, email, online marketing, social media. Automation took some of the greatness of the relationship sale, but lost some of the greatness of the relationship for sale as well. That bespoke relationship disappeared almost overnight and in its place came scale, massive scale. But it drove and fueled the sales industry because for the first time, you were actually speaking to more and more people and you were able to scale that and get better results. But as I mentioned before, every cycle comes to an end. It reaches a plateau, it hits a wall, and that is when competitive advantage disappears because if everyone's doing the same thing, your ability to stand out from the crowd dissipates with it. We know we've hit the plateau in terms of automation in the sales industry. We know because when we look at the data, and I could probably have put 40 to 50 different stats on this slide, but the data tells <coughs> that our efforts in a um, automated world are giving us diminishing returns. Less 3% email click-through rate. That's going down year on year and has done over the last decade. The attempts per prospect goes up year by year. It takes more effort to get fewer results in terms of the way that you outreach. And finally, one of the most impactful as a sales leader our sales reps, our people in the front line, are working harder than they've ever done before. They have more technology to leverage than they ever have before, yet they're actually winning less business. This comes at a cost. IDC recently published a report that told us that out of every dollar that's pulled into a business from the sales function, 10 cents of it is lost poured down the drain due to bad productivity, bad efficiencies, and barking up the, generally the wrong tree when it comes to their sales process. So, what's the answer? What's the next curve? Well, I pressed the button a little bit too quick. I didn't build up the suspense enough there, but <laughs> scaled relationships is the way forward. Scaled relationships. What do I mean by that? Well, it's the way of taking the best of face-to-face the best of automation and actually molding it into the new world. Everything needs to be relationship driven. Everything is powered by technology. It's not taken over by technology, it's powered and enhanced. How do we know? We've seen it before. We've seen it in the B2C world. Go back in the day and it, depending on how old you are, you might well remember the high street was king in B2C. You would go down to your local grocer, your local newsagent, they would know your name, they would know which paper you read, what vegetables you bought. That relationship was amazing. But it gave way to innovation. The big box retailer, which is a very Americanism, but uh, in, in, in the UK it was in the actual sales estates. And the relationship side of things, it gained in the scale. It gained in the inventory that those businesses were allowed to give you. For you as a consumer, you got a better price, a quicker best of that personalized bespoke relationship, and the best of the scalability of automation, and rolled it into one lovely usable package. We all want the Netflix experience. And that's what the future lies. The great news is, getting a high quality relationship at a high scale, is doable in today's modern world and hence you being here today on the path of understanding how social as a digital platform for your sales industry or your sales business will get you there well i'm not sure there's much i can more i can tell you about linkedin 
than Chris already has done. But I think hopefully after today or after my speech or after the next few weeks of, uh, of understanding social, we get to see that we're uniquely placed to give you the advantages that you need on this path to take advantage of the circle of innovation or the cycle of innovation. Nearly 600 million members, 26 million companies, over 200 billion pieces of content shared and curated. If we're talking about relationship driven, powered by technology, social gives us the key. And it's how you actually leverage that is the ultimate question. The value we can give and the value that can be found in taking this curve and jumping on it and going in it full bore is pretty simple. Looking at expanding your existing relationships. If you have relationships, recognize that knowing one person in business is no longer enough. Businesses on average have up to 6.7, not sure what 0.7 people looks like, but on average 6.7 people in every business decision in the modern world in a B2B sense. That's a lot of decision makers that you need to cover off. So being able to expand the existing relationships you do have into new relationships is really a pretty fantastic thing to be able to do. Acquire new business. We all need, a new, need to acquire new business, but you need to acquire new relationships to acquire new business these days. The automation of spray and pray is working. That's not how you build a relationship. Not how I was taught to build a relationship anyway. And finally, the part that pulls it all together is throughout the, the, the journey of improving these two areas, value is found in maximizing the productivity of doing so. To give you an example, I want to take you on a journey. I want to take you back to when I was a little bit younger, back to 1982. Quick show of hands, who was alive in 1982? Barely. Oh wow, okay. Normally that's like three. <laughs> in, in, in my company, there's not many people that were alive in 1982. Makes me feel old. Anyway, imagine a younger me. I'm sat on my couch in Leeds in the north of England. I'm about to watch my favorite show. I actually can guarantee you that my TV pretty much looked like this in 1982. This is probably posh or better than my TV looked. But anyway, I'm about to watch my favorite program. My favorite program was, of course, Knight Rider. <laughs> we know Knight Rider? <coughs> you know, back in the day when David Hasselhoff was cool and not just crazy? <laughs> so I'm watching Knight Rider, I'm on the edge of my seat, he's in the car, someone's chasing him, oh my god, there's a bridge, it's out, what's gonna happen? He's about to hit turbo, Kit's about to go crazy, save the day, <coughs> what happens? <laughs> The bloody Ginsho knife commercial. I know this commercial like the back of my hand. It's etched into my brain. I hate it. Yet, here we are 30 plus years later and I still remember it. Now, why did I hate it? Well, number one, it interrupted the program that I was sat to see. It interrupted the momentum of Kit about to save the day, for goodness sake. Second of all, how repetitive is this message? If I've seen this once, I've seen it a thousand times, but even within the commercial, it repeats itself. Drives me crazy. Third of all, it's irrelevant. What the hell does a 10-year-old care about steak knives, for God's sake? Why would Ginshu knives think that anyone watching Knight Rider in 1982 would care about <laughs> knives that can cut through wood. My goodness me, sends me insane. It's an extreme example, I know, but if you think about the automation curve, the fact that you could, your clients could be feeling interrupted, they feel your message is repetitive, and they feel your message is out of context and irrelevant to them, is an incredible risk to your business. Fast forward to today. This is what a modern B2B sales can look like when you leverage all of the technology that's relationship driven. And I'm of course speaking in particular about LinkedIn, my own platform, but it's not exclusive to us. Uh, yes, I can, play, I can share for that slide. No problem. Uh, so, so this is the journey and the modern journey. 
and I'm going to take you through how LinkedIn can help you on this journey. So it's no longer just about finding a name. I think we can all agree that finding names is easy in the modern world, but sales doesn't start and end with a name anymore. Kind of never did. I'm a big believer in the fact that, that that's the start of when a sales skill kicks in. However, automation kind of changed that a bit. It was all about gathering names, and as long as we've got names, we can pour them into the funnel. And guess what? Out the bottom, it will pop something and we'll sell something to them. Well, finding the right names needs help. You need AI. You need technology to help you understand your bicep. Being able to understand how to then reach out in the best way, how to map relationships that exist, is key to taking advantage of powered relationships. Marketing campaigns, intense signals, is all part of what the future looks like. I'm going to show you a little bit more detail in terms of what I mean. Targeting the right accounts, well this is our account page on Sales Navigator. From the top down, you're able to tell Sales Navigator who you are interested in selling to, and it will spew back every bit of information that we have on that company, whether it be their employees, whether it be their growth cycle, whether it be the information that they're sharing, whether it be the number of employees that are actually on LinkedIn. You name it, we can give you that information. But more importantly, we layer in AI, we layer in machine learning to actually start to get cleaner and more direct the more you use this product. So if you are looking for a particular type of individual, we'll start to find those particular types of individuals in accounts that you might not consider. Pretty cool stuff. From the bottom down, you can start with the leads. Finding the name, great, great start. But what do you do with it? What information can you leverage from, from that individual? Well, the AI will start to actually push forward those, those individuals and, as well as the companies to with it. Once you've found them, it's about engaging. This is a pretty picture. I'm not sure it's going to make much sense at the back, but I'll explain exactly what this is. This is my in-map. So this is a graphical representation of every single person I'm connected to on LinkedIn. The colors are where there's a consistency. So just for an idea, blue is everyone I know in Singapore, every single name that I'm first degree connection. Green is everyone in LinkedIn, in my business that I'm connected to. I'm connected to 3,200 people. Um, a, a blip in terms of Chris's connectivity, but I'd like to say that I've met every single one of these people, potentially. Um, the, the thing I want to really bring out, however, is the green, 350 people potentially of LinkedIn that I actually have a relationship with on my own platform. My company is actually 15,000 people strong. When we're talking about finding networks and relationships at scale, the real magic starts when we're able to show you that a colleague I've never met could be in San Francisco. He's just developed a product for a particular type of CEO, perhaps. Um, he needs to find that particular type of CEO. And, and for argument's sake, let's say that CEO has a mohawk. How does he do it? Well, he uses our tools to find that individual, but then how does he map the relationship? Well, in blue is my Singapore account, or um, um, connections, I should say. As we go closer, we start to see the names. Every, every single name is real. Even closer still, there he is. <laughs> there is the man. I'm surprised he hasn't figured a way of getting his name to actually have a mohawk. However, the point in, in, in or the case in point in this particular example is someone I've never met in my business has access to my digital black book for the first time. Someone in the 15,000 people that work for my business is able to map the relationships I've built over time and leverage those relationships. It works the other way around. My sales team for LinkedIn Sales Solution has 15,000 digital black books to leverage. So chances are that if they need to speak to anyone in this room, there's already a relationship that they can leverage to make that connection. And that changes the game because it's no longer about interruption and irrelevance. Next, identify the buyer circle. This is something a product bolts on to, to Sales Navigator called Deals. We know that sales is more complicated than it's ever been. More people involved. The world is a small place. When I grew up, back in 1982, I didn't even know Singapore existed. 
Now, I can get anywhere in the world in one plane ride. Social means that you can speak to anyone in the world in one click. So it stands to reason that we can use all of our technology to actually take the people that you do know already and actually show you across the buyer circle, the 6.7 people in your decision, and actually bring them to the fore and link that lockstep with your CRM. That's going to be quite valuable, right? The information in your static CRM for once in its life is going to be up to date. Finding the next DM in your op uh, opportunity is but a click and a drag away. It's automatically written back to your CRM. Intent signals. Chris has already touched on point drive. Point drive is phenomenal in terms of we've all been there where we've tried our best to build up relationships and get a pitch going and then what happens, I dread is saying, can you send me some details? And we know that's oftentimes the start of the death of the opportunity because it goes into a black hole and those people are lost, lost forever. Sometimes we actually think they've fallen off the planet themselves. Point Drive changes that because it allows you to control not just your branding and consistency, not just your message, it allows you to control where your content is going. So simply by setting up a Point Drive account, the link you send to an individual is then tracked. Not only do you see what they look at, you see how long they spend on it. But even better still, we're talking about 6.7 people in the buyer circle, you see who they forward it to and who they are, and it automatically tells you their LinkedIn profile and which part and parcel of the actual opportunity they are. It's incredible intelligence. When you're getting buyer intent automatically from all of the hard work and your opportunity, relationships are being driven at scale by technology. And finally, ads integration. We've talked about the funnel, we've talked about the, the methods of pouring as much as we can in the top of the funnel, hoping that, hope beyond hope, that something comes out the bottom of it. Well, for the first time, we're able to actually let the salespeople who know their target market, who know their leads and accounts, tell marketing who to touch, who to warm up, who to brand, to, who to market to specifically. It's changing the game, potentially, because salespeople no longer rely on unknown quantities within leads. They no longer rely on events that have been driven with a scattergun approach. It's very, very focused. And it allows you to be in control of your business. So hopefully you agree from the world where potentially your clients are feeling like the Ginshu knife advert. The future, should you deem to jump on the curve, is bright and biased, obviously, but I'd like to think we can play a part in that. But you're probably asking, does it work? It's all good and well, me showing you some shiny new stuff and a nice app, but does it work? Well, Infosys would say so. Infosys saw the curve before it actually happened. They're one of our earliest adopters in terms of going all in with our sales, sales navigator. What they saw was incredible. They saw their win rates go up by 30%. And they saw nearly half a, tr half a billion dollars of revenue brought into the business on the back of adopting a social selling approach. Which is pretty phenomenal. But I know what you're saying. We can all show one client, right, that's, that's done really well. So I, did, I went into our system and aggregated every single one of them. Every single client we've got, the CRM link, aggregated, gives us these high level numbers. They are winning deals that are 35% bigger because of the relationships that they're building across the businesses. They're not, no longer dealing with one person. They're understanding that multiple opportunities exist in every company. Their win rates have gone up. They're sourcing opportunities on a platform that they never used before. So 34% of new opportunities have been seen across the board. And finally, 61% of their revenue was influenced and brought on board by Sales Navigator itself and having a social footfall. So, scaled relationships is the future. I applaud you because being, just simply being in this room means that you're already on that path. You're already either strategizing, taking advantage, accelerating, but you're already halfway there. I just implore that you take in what you learn from the experts that you will hear from, listen to myself, and try to figure out what this opportunity looks like for you. 
<coughs> because the best thing about innovation is the reward goes to those that jump in first. That reward diminishes over time as laggards and late adopters <coughs> follow the curve. There's opportunity in scale relationships. That does help you make, make the most of it. Thank you. I'm not sure who I'm handing over to. Back to Chris, I believe. So thank you very much. Great to meet you. I'm here all day. So. Feel free.